All right, everybody. In today's episode, we talk about the myths I hate the most in the fitness space. These are ones that actually prevent people from working out and they're lies. They're total lies. So we know you're going to love this episode. Now, here's the giveaway for today's show here on YouTube. The giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. So one of you lucky viewers will get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can enter. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Got to do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Anabolic. One more thing before we get started. We are running a sale right now on three workout bundles. So we have one for beginners, one for those of you that are intermediate, and one for those of you that are advanced. Each bundle is about nine months of planned out workouts, nine months of exercise demos and videos and reps and sets, like everything's planned out for you. So you can pick one of those bundles, beginner, intermediate, advanced, get going now, and you have the next nine months all planned out for you, and they're all discounted heavily. If you're interested in checking that out, head over to mapsjanuary.com. Also, if you just want to try one MAPS program, if you want to find out what all the commotion is about, do MAPS Anabolic. That specific program by itself is also 50% off right now, and you can do that one at mapsred.com. Just use the code JANUARY50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Some of our most popular episodes that we've ever done revolve around myths, right? Mm. Myths around fat loss and muscle building and myths around nutrition and building muscle. And they, and they do very well because um, myths have a tendency to spread and grow. People believe them as to be true. Mm -hmm. And they can be quite damaging, right? If you believe something to not be true to be true, it'll influence your behaviors and your actions, and it can prevent you from accomplishing quite a bit. Um, in this episode, I want to talk about what I believe to be some of the most damaging myths, because the myths we're about to talk about prevent people from getting started with fitness in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like what we're about to talk about m makes people feel like fitness is not for them, that gyms are not places where they're welcome or where they can go to help improve their health and improve their, their mobility and their fitness to help them lose weight, whatever. And, um, and I think it's terrible. And it's, it's funny because I, I, as a kid, I've been in gyms most of my life, but I remember as a young kid kind of thinking these things myself, but very quickly realizing that it's actually the opposite. So mm -hmm. it's it's different when you say something that's not true versus something that's actually the opposite of true. And many of the myths that we're going to talk about today are are not just false, but they're actually the opposite of what you'll find. So what, what prompted this for you? So I was, um, their Self Magazine has been posting lately kind of these interesting articles on fitness, right? And they were posting articles about like how, um, you know, you could be healthy and, and also be overweight. Um, oh, and, that's the one that we were tagged on and we all recently talked about just- They've done a lot of these, right? These posts and, and there's a big article yeah, in Self Magazine talking about this. Woke and fitness this, direction. Yeah. yeah, and there's this movement in the fitness space. It's a small one. I don't think it'll stick because people who work out a lot um, can smell this a mile away. But there's this movement in the fitness space to where, and I, I of course, I'm going to, take some responsibility for the fitness industry. There's a lot of things we've done wrong, a lot of ways that we've communicated fitness the wrong way, so much so that it's caused the pendulum to swing in the opposite extreme um, direction to where people think the answer to, you know, preying on insecurities, telling people that they're they're not sexy enough, they're not hot enough, they need to hate themselves, is to say you know, there is no health negative health effects from obesity and that, um, you know, that, Wanting to lose weight is fat phobia and all that stuff, which is in the opposite, but also extreme and also wrong direction. And so they did a post recently, and I'm going to read <coughs> this some of this caption, and this is really what what motivated me. So I'm I, as I'm because people are tagging me on these things left and right, and this is how it opens. It says lots of fat folks simply don't go to gyms or exercise classes, even if they very much want to. Fitness is already a practice of the privileged. It requires time, money, and access that many people don't have. Fat people have to jump through, jump those hurdles and more just to get to the gym. And when they do, they're often met with judgment, discrimination, and calorie lectures they didn't ask for. The problem keeping fat people out of the gym is not their fatness. The problem is fat phobia. Um, and uh, it really made me upset to read this. I know why they're saying it. 
but it's also so mm. wrong. It's just so, so wrong. It just seems, uh, it's so annoying. It's just more angles they're trying to find here to create like a negative, a divisive a way of, of getting attention in the health and fitness space. And uh, it's it's frustrating for sure to, to see a lot of these myths keep getting um, <clears throat> spread out there about gym culture and, and um, deterring people that really need help from actually enrolling and signing up for something that's going to be, you know, life changing for a lot of these people. Well, so it sounds to me like somebody writing about the gym who's never been to the gym. Yeah. yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. And I think they're trying to draw a, 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 a parallel line to like, like school and educate. Like there's a lot of bullying and yes. shaming and, shit like that on school campuses and within with kids and <clears throat> that message i understand like and i think that uh to a point i think the anti-bullying and and that message is is a, a good message because i think there's a lot of that that does happen um but this is so so far-fetched it's ridiculous i've, I've been, never I've, seen this i've been in the gym industry for 20 years uh most of that time uh actually in the gym working every single day uh, and never once have I seen a fit person inside the gym uh, shame a overweight person in the gym. In fact, uh, it's quite the opposite. Um, and in fact, uh, I, you might see two fit people and the fit another fit person struggling to do something or whatever, and they're ignored and nothing. But if you see somebody who you can tell is very deconditioned or is very new to this place, the opposite response is what you get from really healthy, it, fit people yeah, it's inside crazy. the gym. It's like to me, it seems okay. Like if if you're unfamiliar with something and you're you're thinking about what the experience is going to be like, you have a lot of insecurities that you're kind of bringing in. You start conjuring up your own stories in your head of what the experience is going to be like, and when you get there, it's like completely the opposite of that. And that's every time I've. I have seen that in the gym. You'll see like the biggest, most aggressive looking person in there, like slamming weights. They'll stop at anything to help somebody in this type of situation. Yeah, that's okay. So it's so damaging because if you're already feeling self conscious about the way you look or your lack of fitness or you're, you, you don't, you're not experienced with exercise, you don't know how machines work, you don't know how exercise work, you're already intimidated and you're already feeling self conscious. Then you read some crappy, you know, article like this. Well, you guys scare the shit. It confirms everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I knew I, it was like that. I'm never going to go into the gym. What a terrible place. It's, it's so wrong and it's so damaging. And it's funny because on the one hand, on the one extreme, you know, the fitness industry and media, I should say fitness media industry would prey on your insecurities by telling you that you're ugly, you're not sexy and you need to buy this new pill or whatever to get in shape. This is also preying on your insecurity. They're also telling you all the stuff you feel about yourself, about how scary it is to go to the gym. You're right. Don't go in there. It's so wrong. It's at the most accepting place that you'll ever go into if you're out of shape and you're trying to improve your fitness and health. The most accepting place you'll ever go in your life is a gym. That's a fact. That's 100% fact. Everybody in there is trying to do the same thing. So I, I made a list of, of these myths and I want to go down each one of them one by one. And I even can tell some stories around these because, uh, like I said, as a kid, I experienced a lot of these myself. One of the biggest ones is that people in gyms are mean and critical of out of shape people. That That's so wrong because we're all in there for a reason. And also, in, in there's a very small minority of gyms are made up of super fit athletic rip people like there's <laughs> so very true. small i'm talking about one percent probably of gyms where you walk in and everybody looks like they've been doing it for a long time most gyms are not like that most gyms are filled with everyday regular people yeah. like you don't see i used to do this with with uh potential clients and potential members all the time when they would talk about how you know six packs and all oh, you know people are so ripped and i'd say all right we're gonna go out and walk on the on the workout floor and i want you to point out a person with a six pack and they wouldn't, and I'd say, because the gym is just made up of everyday people. The difference is people are here trying to do something to improve their health and fitness. Um, and that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. So people in gyms are not mean and critical. They're supportive because they're doing the same thing that you are. They're doing the yeah. exact same thing that you're trying to they do. They know the struggles. 100%. And totally. That's, that's the thing. It's just so crazy to me. It's like 
they they like I, I would just look and see somebody struggling. I would stop and, and be more compelled to go, you know, help in, in some some way. And I know there's a lot of people in that environment that feel the same way. We'll go out of their way to help some because they know how challenging it is to begin with. And them just being there and, and wanting to improve themselves, it encourages everybody. It's like, we're all in this together. We're trying to get yes. better. So one of the things I love most about gyms, uh, and I, this is this is how I really fell in love with the gym. I've always, I always liked working out. Remember I started as a kid and I worked out in the backyard. Then a couple of years into it, I actually got my first gym membership and I went in. And what I loved about the gym was there were d different races and genders and ages and wealthy people and people not so wealthy and, you know, teenagers and older people. And it didn't matter. Yeah, it's just it, a melting pot. It did not, nothing, none of it mattered. We're all in here doing the same thing. And I felt that camaraderie in the gym, even though I, you know, put my headphones on and kind of minded my business and try to do my own thing. I noticed that it was this great feel in the facility, this great, you know, atmosphere that, and by the way, I do want to say this also, there's assholes everywhere. So of course- Always exceptions to the rule. Always exceptions to the rule, right? Yeah, somebody's going to have an experience that they'll share or of, something that's negative, Of course, negative, right? there's always assholes everywhere. There's jerks everywhere. But I, I dare you to find another place where everybody has to share the same equipment and it, and it not be as a great environment as a gym. You can't uh, just, find it. I would make the case that you, you're more likely to have somebody- do that or bully you or fat shame you or in a grocery store than inside the gym. Yes. That that would be the case I would make mm -hmm. is that you're more likely to get that at the mall, at the grocery store, in another place than inside the gym when maybe they they're, they're afraid of the gym thinking that it would be worse. I don't think that's I think that's the point okay. is that it's definitely not worse than anywhere else you walk mm -hmm. around in the world. There are going to be assholes everywhere you go, but I think a majority of people will have that. In fact, we were <clears throat> we just recently got back from Utah when we were up there. The TV was playing uh, kind of in the background. We were really watching. We were hanging out, talking and bullshitting. And this like local TV show had this like reality bit that was playing. Oh, it was, it was the What Would You Do series. Okay. With the hidden cameras. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the, it's like one of those hidden camera. And what they do is they stage three actors or actresses that, you know, you have the, the girl who's working out. Uh, and they chose different body types. They used like a girl that was really overweight. And they used a girl that was like really like skinny, skinny, like... And then they had two other actors or actresses that were gossiping about that person. Like, oh, God, Real look, loud. How, look how fat she is. Or, oh, she shouldn't be wearing the... And it's just distracting. Yeah. <laughs> look at her, though. I'm actually astonished. I'm sorry about that. There we go. Look at us and then look at her. And what they were trying to see is what would people do around... And the two things I noticed from, or I took from watching this small bit from this. One, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anybody like do that before. I don't think I've ever heard two Never. people, like the stuff that they had them staged and saying were like viciously mean. Yeah. Like, have I ever heard someone say, a co sure, a comment here or there, but they were like being like really mean, right? Yeah. Really mean. And they were talking loud. Yeah. Like, don't you know that <clears throat> you're not supposed to wear pants like yeah, that? The, yeah. It was like over the top, right? So, which I get it that they were, it's, they were dramatizing it. So the people listening, they wanted to see if they heard that. Now, the thing that I saw that happen, which I do think is true, uh, is every single situation somebody else walked over some other like regular gym goer walked over and stood in said what are you doing yeah, like yeah. what do you go yeah, and then and actually criticize the the people that were being critical uh -huh. of the the you know the girl that was out of shape and so and i really believe that that's exactly what would happen if that e that scenario even happened first right. of all i don't think that scenario happens in the gym or at least in my 20 years i've never seen something uh that egregious happen and then if it were to happen that's how much it is like a community and everybody cares it and supports exactly it yeah. self regulates that some big meathead guy would walk over and and can, check those can girls. i tell you something right now the most dangerous place to to openly i don't know fat shame someone to use their terminology or to criticize someone for how they look. The most dangerous place to do that is a gym. Mm -hmm. If you make fun of somebody for how they look in a gym you're gonna openly, get it. you're, you're going to be a target because that, that environment in the gym is anti that. Everybody's there trying to help themselves and everybody there has been through some type of struggle and challenge. And, and fitness is also doesn't just happen 
to you overnight. And of course, there's those exceptions to the rule of people who look a particular way and that she's got great genetics. But for the most part, people have had to work hard. So you get this genuine respect. I've heard many people in gyms talk about other people in the gym who were beginners or overweight, but it was never negative. It yeah. was always, man, look at her going for it. That's freaking awesome. Or look at that. And in fact, more often, I've seen this happen many times. People will walk by, give someone a high five or a handshake. I've mm -hmm. seen that happen so many times. I, yeah. I remember there was this one woman who came into one of the gyms that I managed and she had just got, she had, she was trying to lose weight to get gastric bypass. So she was a big woman. She was on a treadmill walking very slow, sweating very hard. At least three people who were members walked by and said, you know, great job. Keep going. Like very encouraging. I remember this person broke down into tears. I had signed them up the day before. And I remember they, they broke down into tears and said, I did not expect this kind of support. And I said, of course, would you think that would happen? This is, uh, this is a gym. This is right. what people are doing here. The next myth is that, you know, <laughs> that the most fit people are the most judgmental. This is, again, the opposite. What you're going to find, and this is a fact, for the most part, the most fit people, the people that look the most ripped or whatever, dealt with body image issues themselves and probably are still struggling with them, uh, even though they look super fit. So these are people who have dealt with these issues, are working through them. They look the way they do because they're probably still obsessive and battling it. They're the last people to judge other people who are trying. Again, this re this reminds me of this narrative from like schoolyard bullying. Like, okay, where I see examples of this is the the gifted kid who's probably never worked out, who's, you know, 17 years old and has got great genetics and has already symmetry and a good body. Like everybody went to school with that one that one kid. Uh, whether or the girl who's just naturally beautiful and didn't work for it, and then she, you know, shames or bullies the out of shape girl or the fat girl at school. Like that's mm -hmm. that's where you see this, and where that I I do believe this is uh, you, you know a common practice in with kids, but inside the gym, somebody who has obviously put the work in to build that physique, most of those people are exactly what you said. They're coming from a place of understanding because they were there at one point yes. in their life and or still going through it. Yes. So, uh, you, you know, know what? I tell you what, think of any, maybe this will help people kind of get what we're saying because maybe someone's yeah. listening right now who's never really been consistent in gyms and this is, by the way, this is something that's important to understand. Sometimes your filter makes you see things that aren't there. So you may, if you walk into a gym, feel like people are going to judge you and stare at you. Mm -hmm. That may be what you perceive, right? People may just glance at you because you're there. But you may think, oh my God, they're looking at me. They're judging me. So keep that in mind when you go into these situations. But I'm going to change this just a little bit to help maybe communicate what I'm trying to say here. Think of an expert in any field. Think of an expert uh, at chess, uh, an expert at basketball, an expert at engineering or construction. Now imagine you walk up to this expert and you say to them, hey, I don't know how to do this. This is really hard. Like, uh, Can you mm -hmm, help me? Mm -hmm. 99% of the time, the expert will be more than happy to help you. They have a passion for what they're doing. And they're more than, especially if you ask them, they're more than happy to help you and to show you. And you're not going to, I'm not going to walk into a room full of grandmaster chess players and say, hey, I'm a beginner. I don't know how to play. And they're going to make fun of me. That Those are the people that aren't going to make fun of me. I'm more likely to get made fun of by other people who've never played chess before, mm -hmm. who maybe are have you know their own egos or whatever. Well, I think too, it's um, you start conjuring up a lot of these ideas because you'll see some uh, group of people in there that are really getting after it. And it's like an intense workout yes. and, and it's like, oh, it's aggressive and it's yeah. a little bit intimidating, but you know, that's literally where they're at in their experiences they're able to um you know go that with that kind of intensity and uh but what you'll find is if you talk to them and you have a conversation and really approach them with the right energy and i think that's an important fact is like coming up to them and with an inquisitive kind of curious um type of of question for them to um you know be able to see kind of like how they can guide you or like give you some advice like yeah. they're more than always more than helpy uh helpy <laughs> help you <laughs> more more than happy to help you uh and it just seems like it wouldn't be the case because they're so you know aggressively getting after yeah it. no i'm glad you said that because that also can cause that perception is when someone is in their zone and then their space uh, i do this right when i work out i'm 
uh, essentially blind to anything that's happening around me. I don't hear conversations around me. I don't care about what's happening with the bench next to me or the squat rack behind me. I'm in my zone. And so if you're going in with the perception that, oh my God, fit people are judgmental, uh, fit people are looking at me, and then you see me in there sweating with my head down, this kind of aggressive look on my face, you may think because you have that filter, that's one of those people. That's one of those people that, that's judgmental. When in reality, I might not even know you exist right now. I am literally in my space. Yeah, just focused. However, this has happened to me before, especially when I manage gyms. See, when I manage gyms, I would put my headphones on and I'd be in my space, but because people recognize me as a manager, they were more likely to stop me. Now, if I go into a gym now, I'll, I'll never, typically nobody will say anything to me because I'm in my own space. But when I was a manager, sometimes people would tap me on the shoulder knowing I was a manager. And I'd, right away, I'm out of it and how can I help you? What's going on? And even if, I, even if it had nothing to do with stuff that a manager would have to answer, it could be just a question about working out or, or a machine or whatever, people would stop me and I would love to help them out because... I mean, I love this thing called fitness, and I'm willing to help uh, anybody who has a question. And most people uh, who work out in gyms are like that. Mm -hmm. All right, the next one is this is a huge myth that I think it's it's two. There's there's kind of two sides to this that are negative. One is that um, mm. that I should listen to anybody who looks fit because they know everything about fitness, and the, the other is um, well, they're going to judge me because they know everything about fitness and I'm not doing anything right, or they're going to think I'm doing everything wrong, and they think you know they're going to think I'm an idiot. The myth is that that fit-looking people have it all figured out. Well, this is totally false. Uh, fit-looking people do not have it all figured out. What they probably have figured out <clears throat> is the consistency part. That's the part that they typically have figured out. They've just done it consistently. Didn't take. Don't miss a lot of days. Don't miss a lot of weeks. And they're consistent. That's why they look the way that they do. But as far as figuring it all out, um, that's that's not true at all for the most part. And again, I said this earlier. Most people who work in the fitness industry either have dealt with or deal with body images, image issues themselves. Um, so they obviously haven't figured it all out. It's a well, challenge. I think this is a uh, gym and Instagram. <laughs> I yeah. think that there's this idea of just because somebody has a six pack or they look amazing that they have figured all this out. I remember sharing with you guys and I've shared on the podcast many times how, uh, how blown away I was. Uh, and I, I kind of knew this already. Um, but even I was fooled by the experience I had when I started competing. I just assumed that this is the 1% that they have to really know their shit. And I was blown away to find out it wasn't that they weren't any more different than the average. They, the things that they struggle with were just different. Um, you know, everybody has their challenges uh, in life when it comes to health, fitness, nutrition, relationship health. There's so many things that encompass health and we all have our, our challenges. Yeah. And just because somebody has figured out the macro ratio to exercise mm -hmm. does not mean they figured out the rest of the mm -hmm. sphere at all. Uh, and that, and I think that's the mistake is to think that these people have it all figured out because they figured a piece mm. of that sphere out. And it, again, it's no different than the average person have figured out something else. And so I think they're way more like you than you think they are. Yeah. Again, they've just they've applied the discipline and consistency of the law of thermodynamics. They have figured out if I eat less than I, I burn, I'm going to stay lean. And if I lift weights every single day intensely, I'm going to add some muscle on my body. And so they figured that piece out, but they could be completely out of balance and struggling on other aspects of their life. Yeah, well, that's why this is a lifetime pursuit. Is everybody has problems, and this is sort of the the place where we're all working it out. And, and everybody's problems looks different. Uh, yeah, and it does look like a lot of fit people have it all figured out. But like you said, it's like th there could be other aspects that they're trying to improve. Um, and everybody comes from different places and different experiences and there's a lot of different variables they are working their way through. So uh, that's the beauty of it is like, we're all there to work and sort these problems out and improve our body and improve our mindset. And, uh, it really doesn't matter, uh, what you're bringing in as long as you're in there putting in the work. Yeah. You, you said something, Adam, I think that I want to go back to, it's really important. You said that, um, they're just like you, mm -hmm. right? When you look at someone who's fit and you think they have it all figured out, either one or two things will happen. Either one, you'll put them on a pedestal, or two, Which, you'll. By look, the way, they're they're bound to fall off of if you do that. Of course. Or two, um, you think that that person uh, is uh, somehow 
different, more privileged, more whatever. They don't know anything about you. They don't understand you. Or you're, they, they look at you differently. They look at you in a bad way. They're bad people. Uh, none of that is, is true. I mean, some of it can be true, but oftentimes it's not. They are just like you. You know, the thing about your physical fitness is it's very visible. So it's, it's easy to see when someone has a challenge with physical fitness. It's not as easy to see when someone has challenges with other aspects of their life. So it's, it, it is, it, I can see why someone would put someone on a pedestal or think of them that way, right? But you don't know if that person with the six pack has a you know, really tough relationship with their spouse or had a bad, hard upbringing or is, is challenged with finances or maybe has another health issue that you don't know about. Um, so I don't think it's any different than the the halo effect that we do with like actors and actresses. Yes. Mm -hmm. We assume because they're they're rich and they made it on the movie screen that they have life figured out and their life is so good. Mm -hmm. It's like why? Because they figured out one piece. They figured out how to make a <laughs> lot of money. It all balanced. That's yeah, no, they myth. figured out how to make a lot of money. So you're going to go ahead and assume that they're good people. Assume that they know all these things. I think that's hilarious. It's no different here. You walk in a gym and there's a very small percentage of people that are jacked and ripped. And then you're going to just assume that because yeah. they're, they got it all figured out because of that, because they figured one thing out. Like, it's so weird to me that we we think like this. It's like, we're all a lot more like each other than you than you realize. Yep. It's just that everybody's demons are a little bit different. Everybody's struggles are a little bit different. Everybody's successes are a little bit different in life. And so just because that person has figured a, a, that piece of it out that maybe you haven't doesn't mean that they're not a lot like you. It also might mean you have something to offer them. Right. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. I mean, I learned so much uh, in gyms from people um, who I would help with fitness and they would help me with business or with finance or with... You know, I used to have uh, my older members would come in and I'd ask them questions about being a father, you know, and give me that kind of wisdom. So here's another one. And this is this is, again, in direct response to that article that uh, it, it costs a lot of money to have access to a gym. Well, first yeah, off, didn't, I want to be. Did, didn't they say something it's, it, uh, that health and fitness is a privil thing of privilege? Yeah. Like, like I, and this is, I get it's somewhat a like. It's not a privilege. I guess good health can be a privilege. Some people have genetically bad issues with I get all that but the pursuit of fitness is not a privilege pursuit of fitness is available to anybody and it looks mm -hmm. different for everybody first off you don't need a gym at all to mm -hmm. do it nothing you need no equipment to pursue fitness you need zero equipment so you don't need a gym but number two of all of the investments that you make in your life the gym is the least expensive <laughs> gyms are not expensive especially nowadays there's gyms you can sign up for nine bucks a month. You know, you know when I really figured this out. By the way, when I managed gyms in the late '90s, early 2000s, they were way more expensive than they are now. Okay, they got a lot more, less expensive because the market grew, and they figured out how to make money charging less and all that stuff. But I remember, I'll never forget, a guy walked in. He looked homeless. Walked in and asked about the club. And I had one of my sales guys, and I said, "Hey, give him a tour, show him around." And my sales guy was a little bit like, oh, "I don't know if he." I said, "Just do it," you know and see what happened. So he did. He gave him a tour, showed him around. And the guy bought a membership and he was homeless. Do you know why he bought the membership? He gave him access to a shower. He got to work out and it was open 24 hours. And it was the least expensive way he could get access to that kind of stuff. And I said, that makes a lot of sense. He's paying 20 bucks a month. Where can you pay 20 bucks a month for that kind of access to things, right? Well, now you could buy a membership for nine bucks a month, but you don't even have to do that. You can work out with no equipment at all. Um, and you can work out. You could also make your own equipment. Have you ever seen the videos on Instagram of dudes yeah. and girls are like, in Oh, I love the ingenuity of seeing some of these uh, creations, especially over the pandemic. I've seen uh, a few people like build uh, machines yes. with wood in, in their backyard. And I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, and again, it might be intimidating, but um, you know, there's, there's definitely a low cost way to, um, you know, apply a program and get into fitness. Right well, away. especially, okay. Especially when we're talking about fitness and health, we're not talking about competing at the professional level as a bodybuilder. Like it, it doesn't take a lot to be active and say no to food. That does, it's that's actually not, that's more not a, expensive. That is not a more. thing of privilege. Yeah, thing, yeah. A thing of privilege is not the, the act of saying no to excess calories and moving your body in a physical way is not a thing of privilege. And that's what we're talking about right now. We're not, is, is maybe competing 
at the highest level, I think you're probably, well, yeah, okay, you need access to steroids, you need access to a lot of probably gym equipment. You need, you like, get, super you, genetics. You need, you need to be on a very high-protein type of diet and be able to eat and surplus a calorie. Okay, you can make that case. I'll concede that, that that's a place of privilege a little bit to be able to do something like that. I get that. But... To, to try and say that fitness or health mm. or that that is, that's that's ridiculous no, we, to me. We all have choices and we can pursue it. You know, I've trained clients that were paraplegics. I've trained clients that had severe physical, um, you know, uh, issues that prevented them from doing a lot of different things. But they could still pursue improving their health and fitness through choices that they make. So, and that, that of the message that we're countering is one of disempowerment. So, mm -hmm. what they're trying to do is they're trying to disempower you because when you're disempowered, you're easy to manipulate. This is a big problem. Remember this. When you have, when you feel no power over yourself and your life and your circumstances, that means someone else can manipulate you either to buy their product or to vote a particular way or to do something. Okay? So they're disempowering you. The truth is, again, uh, getting up and walking or moving your arm or making different food choices or even changing the, the way you think about things. All of those can be in pursuits of health and fitness. And all of them are accessible to most people. And even buying a gym membership. Look, I tell you what, most Americans have a cell phone. Most Americans pay a cell phone bill. A cell phone and a cell phone bill is far more expensive than the average gym membership. It just is. I mean, Planet Fitness, for goodness sakes, I think that's the largest gym chain in America. What's the, What do they charge per month? Nine bucks? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's cheaper than Netflix. You know how many people tell me I can't afford, oh, I don't know if I want to spend that much to go to a gym, but they pay for Netflix, Hulu. Oh, well, I know. It's phones. inconsistent, like, yeah, when you start doing the math of like the Starbucks and yes. you know, all the excess uh, items that uh, you end up purchasing, you don't realize. Like if you do an inventory and you look at all these spending habits, you can really cut it down That's and prioritize it. It's a stupid it. argument. It's, yeah. argument. it's it, not even worth spending that much time on it. It's just giving you an excuse. So it's yeah, like, I know. We've, there's lots of ways around, um, you know, having a, a gym. You don't need a gym to, to be in, in great shape and stay healthy. And so it's a, it's another terrible argument that that, that health magazine or whatever their shape, shape, is it shape? Self. Or self. That's what yeah. I'm sorry. Self yeah. magazine. Here's another one. And this one I thought would be the case when I was a kid, just because of the stereotypes you see on TV and movies but it turned out to be the opposite. And that's the myth that the biggest, strongest people in the gym are mean, that they're not welcoming, right? Now, now, I, now I get this one, right? So do I, right? I, I, I get that because at first glance, I mean, even you me- You ever as, watch a big, strong dude lift? Yeah, weights? yeah. So even me, like, right? I, even me at first glance walking in the gym when I was, you know, a skinny little 160-pound boy getting ready to lift for the first time, and across the gym was the 260 pound steroided out meathead dude who was slamming the weights Rah! every time. Like I most certainly yeah, he looks angry, right? I didn't <laughs> I didn't feel confident to probably go walk up to him, or I probably avoided because I was probably intimidated. So I think that they at first glance it's very easy for us to judge and go like, oh, I bet he's an asshole because he's on steroids, or I bet he's an asshole and thinks so. I'm I'm sure it's really easy for us to assume that, and I'm just as guilty of it. But the crazy part is. Maybe the maybe the nicest people in the gym That's of the all the people that of, is the of truth. all the cardio bunnies, the yoga stretchers, the fucking you know weekend warrior guys. Like maybe the powerlifting, huge steroided out meat guy, meathead guy, teddy bear, maybe the biggest teddy bears and most helpful people in the gym. It is now. Now you have to understand one thing because if you interrupt someone's uh, workout, so mm -hmm. if someone's working out, they're on a time frame, they have specific exercise they want to do. They're very focused, and then you go interrupt them. And if somebody's short with you, it's because you're you may be interrupting someone's work. They may be a competitive lifter, they may be a, a professional bodybuilder, or this may be the hour they have of the day where they do this. So if somebody's short because of that, it's not because they're being assholes to you, but rather it's like you're walking in on somebody in the zone working. You know, writing a book and you interrupt them. So that may actually that might happen. Well, Although it's still rare, it's still rare. For the most part, if you walk up to a big, strong, muscular person and ask them a fitness question, here's what I experienced. I, I'll never forget this. This was one of my my introductions into the gym. Like I was working out and I was training my legs. I was trying to build my legs up, and there were these massive power lifters in the squat rack next to me, and I'm working out and I'm trying hard. And I'm sweating and I really wanted to so bad. I wanted to ask them a question. I wanted to say, hey. But I was intimidated. They looked, you know, mean. They were so focused. They were grunting. And as I, I remember, I was trying to muster up the courage 
to go and ask them, you know, what I should do. And I finally did. And they spent like 30 minutes with me, showing me what to do, showing me how to squat, taking me through a workout, patting me on the back. You're going to do great, kid. Don't worry about it. And it was like, that was one of the greatest experiences I ever had. Mm -hmm. I've seen that happen time and time again. I've seen that happen in uh, almost every gym I've ever managed. I've seen it with the, and you know this because in most gyms, again, there's a one percent. There's a one percent of gyms where most people look like this in the facility. Most gyms don't look like this. Most gyms, everyday people, and then there's that one guy or that one girl that really stands out. And you know them, right? They come into your gym. If I manage a gym, I always knew them because they stood out. The big dude that come in, oh, there's you know so and so. He's going to put five plates on the bar and do some squats or whatever. And I remember I would see every once in a while, someone would have the courage to go up and ask them a question. And you know what they would always do? Take their headphones off, and they would spend like twenty minutes. Helping them out, yeah. showing them exercise. It was like clockwork like every single time. Go out of their way to help them. Yeah. Go out of their way to help them out. Um, now, I am going to make a comment about that 1% of gyms where everybody looks super jacked and crazy. Those are some of the most supportive places you've, you'll ever go into, usually. You mm-hmm. go into a powerlifting gym or a strongman gym, uh, unless you're going in there to make fun of them or to you know be lazy. If you go in and you're genuine, you have questions, they will all stop to help. All of them will stop. By the way, if you're a female and you have genuine questions about fitness, and I know there's, there's, like I said, there's always assholes anywhere you go. There's always going to be that, that pervert everywhere you go. But when you're a woman and you ask some of these guys, because I know women are more intimidated typically than men about this, you ask a big dude about, hey, how do I deadlift more? So they, will, they will help you. In fact, the women in the gyms that were really trying to get in shape, the ones that were beginners, out of shape, the ones that had the challenges but were coming in consistently, the big guys in the gym were almost like they're big brothers. I swear to God, if you would see this in the gym, it was like they were helping them. Oh no, come over here. Let me do your form. Let me help you with this. And they were almost like, and they would tell me, man, I feel like when I go to the gym, when I come to your club, I was so intimidated about going to the weight room. Now I feel like I got all these big brothers in here kind of watching out for me. And I loved, I would love hearing that because it's so true. Well, mm-hmm. I think the, the point of this whole episode or this message is not that it's none of these things have never happened before. It's just that it's a terrible message that's being promoted by these magazines or articles or this new movement of woke fitness that uh if you know why give people a, a reason to not go to the gym when it, it's it's the complete it's imperative opposite if they go now yeah it's not that this all these situations haven't happened once before or whatever it's just that it's so outlandish that it's more likely to happen in your local grocery store or on a campus at college or school before right. it's going to happen in the gym. So don't be spreading bullshit like that. That's going to keep people from doing that. You don't hear anybody talking about that for school or grocery stores. So I think putting it out there and kind of shaming gyms or shaming people that exercise consistently in the gym is just as bad as fat shaming somebody. It is. It's passing judgment and it's passing judgment on how people look. It's the same damn exact thing that they're accusing uh, other people of doing. But again, I'll say this all day long. If you're looking to improve your fitness and health, one of the most supportive places you'll ever go is a place where everybody's trying to do that as well. And that's the gym. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 